Hey, Nick here. I uh, hope everyone's having a good Easter weekend. I uh, just thought I'd make a bit of a video here uh, just to talk in a, a little bit about paint scheme that I chose for the Freeborn Damari. Uh, these are guys that I've been painting on and off for the last couple of years, really. Uh, I never really intended to get uh, Freeborn. It kind of happened by accident. There was a really good uh, sale on at Warlord. They did this brew sale back in 2019 and ended up with uh, selling squads of Damari for uh, two pound a sprue, so that's that was eight figures for two pound. It was ridiculous. So of course um, couldn't say no to that. And then uh, of course that was just the bait because then uh, of course there's loads of other awesome models that I started thinking oh I could get them as well. And uh, next time I was in Nottingham, got a whole rake of stuff, and still haven't painted most of it. So uh, trying to get back into it now because we're all getting excited about Antares too. And figure, yeah, it'd be nice to share a bit of content. So uh, this is more practice for some editing and no big thing. Just uh, enjoy yourself. So uh, have a good one. So some of the paints I'm using uh, from the Army Painter range are uh, got a few different greys. There's Spaceship Exterior, Stone Golem and Ash Grey. Uh, and then I went out and got more sandy, deserty kind of colours. So Cobalt Skin, Banshee Brown. Uh, brain Matter Beige, uh, Leather Brown and Arid Earth, and then of course uh, Matte Black and Known Oil is always good for a bit of pin lining. So uh, that's the starting point and uh, I started off with some base coating and pin lining. So this is a guy that I've just done the base coating and as you can see he's got uh, a variety of yeah kind of on his trousers and I've just kind of mixed it up because what I didn't want is that they have a kind of uniform. So uh, I've tried to keep each one of them a little bit distinct. So uh, yeah, like this guy, this guy has the same kind of colors, but in uh, different places. So uh, essentially what I'm doing is just, uh, you know, like uh, putting big areas of base coats and then just going over it with uh, with a little bit of null oil, but trying to be nice and careful because we're wanting to sort of pin line it as opposed to sort of like flood the whole area. And I think I, I could have done also with maybe getting some some contrast paints or something. Um, particularly, I think it's uh, some of the ones for white could have been quite useful. But but as it goes, these ones are these ones are good. So uh, yeah, there we go. That's the first stage. There we go, that's all eight of them, uh, all done with the base coats and a little bit of pin lining, nothing too fancy. See how that looks.
And so for a little bit of colour, what I've been using is this uh, ultramarine, ultramarine blue from uh, Army Painter. And there we go. Now, predictably, it's a little bit separated. I don't think it was quite that colour before, so I'm going to give it a good shake. I'm going to try that again. There we go, that's more like it. So, uh, yeah, Army, paints, Army Painter paints do have a bit of a reputation for being quite... Um, you know, needing needing good shake to properly get the get the most out of them. And indeed, this one I don't know if you can tell, but that's certainly a very different colour from the first the first lot that come out. But uh, no complaints, paint is paint. And then we're a little bit of matte white there, just wanting to go for a kind of um, kind of lavender colour. And that's why I found this goes really nicely when you. Uh, just sort of lighten up some of this ultramarine blue get this lovely lavender color and uh, that goes really nicely onto the model so So really my idea is just to use a very minimal minimal areas of this. I don't want it to be like too striking. But then the thing is I tend to get carried away and then you know it just gets darker and darker. But anyway, for now, see how this goes. I'm just going for his little armor highlights, really. Like, uh, the general thing is, of course, the desert scheme, and we don't want to overshadow that. But there are little details that maybe we can, maybe we can use, like the end of his gun here. You know, our general idea is not to, not to make it overpowering. <clears throat> so there we go now he's got a so just that little bit of color i think really makes the difference you know, it makes it a lot more interesting visually but without taking away from the desert warrior vibe uh, what I'm going to do is to go through and just darken that up a little bit with some shading and just at the bottom of the the knee pads and a little bit around the, the darker areas of the so they're just really going to take a little bit of this on sort of blend it in together a little the same way with the the underneath of the knee pads here. So this is just a quick thing, but obviously, and it's a little bit restricted by the camera, but what I would normally do is to go over everything, spend quite a lot of time on it, to get everything right. That is the general idea. So already that looks a lot more interesting than just uh, the desert scheme alone. And I was quite happy with this. And then I decided, rightly or wrongly, that I was going to add a bit more than that in terms of colour. And that was going to also 
add a little bit of orange in some of the guns. So after adding the blue to them, I think that makes them look quite distinctive now. And I don't know, I questioned myself whether I kind of overdid it with having the colour, because now it does make them look a little bit more uniform-like. But overall it's a nice kind of effect. I think they're nice. So a little bit to say about the sculpts actually. I really like these these sculpts for the Freeborn Damari. Um there's a few guys like you know just in a in a good sort of shooting shooting pose and uh you get to select what arms they have so so one of them has a uh this uh what's it called micro x launcher i believe it's called and the others have mag guns but uh yeah they they all look pretty cool and then you get one who's presumably squad leader and they have a plasma pistol and uh some kind of a, a scanner thing or you can choose to have them with a with a plasma rifle and then something has to be said about the the famous leaning domari so this is the one sculpt that's a little bit peculiar um the lean on him he's obviously taking a, a headlong rush into battle but uh yeah it's a little bit odd really um usually what we do is uh yeah for example this guy just kind of took a a lesson from uh, Kevin from Tabletop Warlords. He said to cut the heel of it, and uh, then you can make him stand up straight a little bit better. So that's that's what I did with that one. Um, yeah, looks like he's doing a little jig now. All in all, yeah, that's a that one is a is a little bit of a strange sculpt, but uh, the others are pretty cool, and indeed, they have their own charm. So at this point, I kind of thought to myself, well, it'd be nice if they had maybe a little bit more colour. And I chose to put a little bit of orange in to just highlight some of the weaponry. And I have a separate video for that. I'll add just now. And one of the last things is the basing. So for this, I just used a bit of super glue and just some sand that I found out in the street. And some of them I've also used a little bit of baking soda and super glue just to kind of raise up the height a little bit uh, there's various tutorials on desert bases on YouTube and uh, yeah they explain things better than I can but generally speaking if you use baking soda it makes the the grains of sand look more sand like and less uh, rock like of course given the given the scale of the thing so uh, yeah you get some interesting effects with that so here's the squad leader who's now complete. As you can see, he has the the uh, colourful details, and uh, he's also got a, a desert base with a little tiny bit of cork on it. But also there's some baking soda, and he has a little tuft. And actually, I, I decided to add some cool alien eggs on this one. That's some weird unknown creature, which will be ready to hatch and slither off somewhere perhaps but yeah those are actually made from mustard seeds by the way if anyone's interested and yeah i think he come out quite good a couple more painted now you can see that there's a, a bit of variation in the color i didn't want to with the bases i didn't want to have them sort of too uniform so I've really used uh, a lot of variation going from all the way from light, so the, the kind of arid earth kind of highlights uh, and then others being kind of more brown, so kind of taking it down to leather brown and indeed some of them, uh, some of them I started, for example this guy, he was started with a base coat of hull red, I believe it's called. <clears throat> which is one of the air airbrush rain range but yeah he came out quite nice so uh, i like that you know although there's sand and uh you see he's a little bit more baking soda on his rather than stones he's a little bit more stony so uh yeah mixing the bases up a little bit in the same way that the the 
the colours for the overall scheme is mixed up a little bit. But I don't think it takes away from anything. I think it kind of adds to it. So there we go. There's a finished squad. And yeah, as you can see, the guy with the Micro X launcher here in the middle. Uh, I didn't actually add any orange onto him. I thought he was cool enough. I thought he was perfect just as he was. Uh, so the only ones which have the orange added is just little flashes on the mag guns. And yeah. And of course, after I'd finished these, I then realized that I had kind of taken the scheme still from the box art a little bit without really realizing it. But, you know, if you look at the box art, they do actually have orange with light blue. And uh, so unconsciously, I started drifting back towards that scheme. Totally didn't notice it at all until I saw one of the boxes. But, you know, it's part of the fun. So, yeah, they have a little call back to the original color scheme of the studio but overall I'm really happy with these guys and I uh, just did the basing up yesterday so I reckon that I'll also some point this week base up the rest of them so hope you enjoyed the painting video it wasn't really much painting going on I know but uh, it's kind of hard when uh, when you got the yeah I need to get some kind of setup for that if I want to actually film the brush going onto the going onto the model, but if that's the bit that people are interested in or more interested in the the scenery and uh, color schemes that kind of thing. But anyway, there we go. So I'm going to play about with some editing and see if we can't get this online. So cheers, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care.